Hey guys, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and I want to show you how to replicate one of my favorite features from Playback Pro, which is the multi-track playback app available from multitracks.com in Ableton Live. And that's a dynamic guide cues feature. It's, it's absolutely incredible. The first time I got it was working with the beta version of the app and tried it, and I just thought, wow, this is, this is revolutionary. What dynamic guide cues do is if I go into a song section, Verse. You'll hear you get a guide cue that's going to tell you whatever section you're going into. Well, one of the great features of apps like Ableton Live, or especially Ableton Live, and I've used it for years, is I can just loop something really quickly. I can have a MIDI note assigned up here to this repeat section, and it's just going to repeat and go back right to the uh, previous locator. Um, and I can just do that really, really quickly. Well, the downside is if you're doing it with, with guide cues, um, then it's going to say verse even though you're looping. What Playback Pro does is when I press loop, which is going to loop the section I'm on, it's going to dynamically create or change my guide cue to say intro instead of verse. And it does it automatically. So if you want it done automatically, I'd encourage you to check out Playback Pro. It's an incredible, incredible app for what it does. But we can do something similar in Ableton Live. It takes a little bit of work. It's not going to be automatic. Um, but it's, it's fairly simple and fairly easy to set up and do. So let me show you what it looks like. You saw earlier we have that guide cue that goes in a verse. If I start here, press R on my keyboard to repeat. Listen what happens. Intro. There's our intro guide cue. And it's going to go back to the intro. Now I'm going to just jump ahead for the sake of time. I'm not going to touch anything. And now... Verse. We go back to our verse guide cue. So what's really great about this is by default, if I don't touch anything, don't hit repeat, then my song's just going to play as normal. But as soon as I hit that repeat uh, button, which could happen any time in this section, doesn't just have to be this last measure, um, then that section is going to repeat and my guide cue is going to change with it. So let me break this down, show you step by step how to do this. The first thing I did is I have my guide cue track. This is just the default one that's generated by multitracks.com. Um, any, any song you've purchased from multitracks, you have this guide cue in there automatically. And that guide cue, again, is going to tell us whatever section we're about to head into. Great so feature for our band. The only thing we're going to do to this track is we need to assign a key or a MIDI note if we're using a MIDI controller. So in my case, I'm doing both. So I'm going to go into Command-K. You can see I have R assigned here. So all we have to do to assign a MIDI note, um, or excuse me, in this case, a key, is click what you want to assign, which is track activator, and press R to assign it. Same thing for MIDI. I'll delete that. I'll click track activator, hit the MIDI note on my MIDI foot controller, and that's automatically assigned. So that's all we have to do for the guide cue. Our next track here is a dynamic guide cue track. And all this is, is I'm just using the free content, the free guide cues available on multitracks.com on our free content page. And I'm just dragging this in. And I want to make sure this is happening at the same um, part of my song that my other guide cue would happen, which is basically the the first beat of the last measure of that section. So um, normal guide cue is happening same place in uh, to say verse. This one is happening um, to say intro. Okay, so dynamic guide cue track is just an audio track. We bring this clip in. We set it right there. Um, the thing we have to do here is we want to do the same thing where we assign our key, our MIDI note, just like we did. But we want to make sure we turn that track off. Okay, so that is key. Make sure that track is turned off. The next track is a repeat track, and um, that's a MIDI track. So all I did was just create a MIDI track. I renamed it repeat. Then I route the MIDI from this to the IAC driver. We've talked about the IAC driver before, so I won't go into depth, but just a reminder, allows us to use MIDI clips in live to basically control things in live. It routes MIDI out of live back into it to allow us to control it, which is a great feature. So I want to make sure the MIDI output for this track goes to IAC driver. Then I have a MIDI clip here. I just created a MIDI clip, created a MIDI note, that is C minus two. Then I assign that MIDI note up here to my previous locator button. Um, and it's really easy to assign MIDI. I'll show you guys how to do this. Let me deactivate this clip for a second. Um, I'm going to go into MIDI map mode. We'll delete this note. Um, if I go back here, we'll just click previous locator. Verse. And then once I get out, now as soon as that hits, it's going to take us to our previous locator, which is a great way to basically set up um, a repeat right which is which is really really nice um so i have that repeat midi clip set up c minus two is assigned to previous locator the next clip i have set up is this flip button and what this flip button does is it's now a midi note in this case f sharp minus two that is assigned to the track activator buttons for guide 
dynamic guide and repeat. Now, if you've been doing this with a MIDI controller so far, all you need to do is just go and hit this last button again and assign that. If not, then you need to go in, if you're, you know, for instance, using R, just like we talked about just on our keyboard, you need to make sure you still have this MIDI clip and you can assign it to any MIDI note um, and you want to assign it to the track activator for all three of these tracks, right? So for guide, dynamic guide, and repeat. Um, that's going to be essential to make sure this works properly. So once you make this MIDI clip, repeat, and this one, and again, if you're um, going to have this function work with a MIDI controller, make sure this MIDI clip is the same note as whatever you mapped uh, these two for your MIDI controller. Okay. Um, and then the last thing we do here is we want to disable the track activator for repeat. So before we get into our song, once we save it, um, before we load it to our next song, we want to make sure guide is turned on, dynamic guide is turned off, and repeat is turned off. So the way this works is when I press R or hit this MIDI uh, note on my MIDI foot controller, then what happens is, again, R is assigned to track on off. It's going to turn the guide cues track off and turn the dynamic guide cues track on. So then when we get to this part of our song, it's going to trigger that re repeat MIDI clip, which is going to set up here to go to previous locator, right? But then it's going to hit this flip clip. And as soon as it hits the clip that has that MIDI note in it, watch what happens right here. You'll see it flips back to our guide cue track comes on, dynamic guide gets muted, and repeat gets muted. This is a great thing because we don't have to hit repeat and then make sure we have a measure to hit it again to flip these tracks back. It's automatically going to happen for us. So again, let me show you. We could start anywhere in the measure. Press R. You'll see our track activators flipped. And then watch what happens here. Let's zoom out. We go to this locator. Once we hit flip, we go back, right? And then again, if we jumped ahead, I didn't change anything, it's just going to go verse. right ahead to verse. So that's how we can use Ableton Live and the IEC driver to create dynamic guide cues in Ableton Live.